Ionization creates ions. More specifically, ionization is the removal of an electron from an atom. The energy required to remove an electron is intimately related to the electronic structure of the atom. In general, ionization energy increases as we go from left to right and from bottom to top across the table. This section and the next both involve the creation of ions by transfer of an electron. We have two different terms for this process, depending on whether we are adding or removing an electron. This section will discuss the energy required to pull an electron away from an atom to form a cation. This process is always endothermic, since it involves pulling a negative charge away from a positive charge. A low ionization energy means it is easy to remove an electron. Section 7.5 will discuss the process whereby an atom gains an electron, forming an anion. This process is usually exothermic, but it depends on the element and the energy levels. As with atomic size, there are periodic trends for ionization energy. As we go down a column, the outermost electrons are further away from the nucleus, making them easier to remove. Thus, ionization energy decreases down a column. As we go to the right across a row, the effective nuclear charge increases, meaning the electrons are held tighter by the atom. There is also a reluctance for atoms to break a full energy level, which further increases ionization energy for some elements most notably noble gases. So the elements with the highest ionization energies live in the upper right of the table. We call these elements nonmetals. And the elements which lose electrons easiest have the lowest ionization energies and live in the lower left of the table. Those are the metals. If we graph ionization energy versus atomic number, we see it generally increases across a period. Many inconsistencies or bumps on the graph can be explained by an atom's extra stability by having a full or half full energy level. Notable examples of this are beryllium versus boron, magnesium versus aluminum, nitrogen versus oxygen, and the relatively high ionization energy of every element in zinc's family at the end of the transition metals, due to having a full D shell. Removing an electron from a neutral atom requires pulling a negative charge away from a positive charge, which always takes energy to accomplish. In this atom of beryllium, it takes 0.9 megajoules of energy to ionize one mole of beryllium atoms. Removing a second electron from beryllium is even harder as we have to pull a negative charge away from a two plus positive charge. Beryllium's second ionization energy is about twice as much as its first at 1.76 megajoules per mole. However, beryllium's third ionization energy is colossally larger than the previous two at 15 megajoules per mole. While some of this is due to the difficulty of pulling a negative charge away from a three plus charge, a better explanation involves beryllium's place in group two on the periodic table. Group two elements have two valence electrons situated in the outermost energy level for beryllium, that's the 2s level. Elements lose their valence electrons relatively easily compared to losing their inner electrons. If we tabulate this trend for a row of the table, such as for period three, we see a pattern emerge. Valence electrons have relatively low ionization energies, but there's a gigantic jump in ionization energy once the valence electrons are gone. Each of these elements has one additional valence electron compared to the last, meaning the jump happens at one further ionization.